Things are heating up in the officiating world. The regular NFL officials are back to work and uh, conference play in full swing. And things seem to be, the pressure seems to be taking a notch up. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about preparation. And I brought in NFL referee and AAHSO President Walt Coleman to spend a little time visiting with us about preparation. You know, the preparation to work a football game uh, is not just a one-day function. It's more like a whole week function in getting preparation for what we're going to do on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. You know, you have to you have to constantly work on all elements of your game. Obviously, we all need to be in great good shape, so we need to be working out. We need to be able to to keep up with the players. We need we need to be able to run and keep and, and cover our position, whichever position it happens to be. We need to know the rules. We need to study the rules. We need, to, we need to think about mechanics. We need to look at video. We, look, we need to look at, at, at training. We need to look at other games. We need to look at other people who are officiating. And you can't just do that on Friday you just, or Saturday or Sunday. You have to do that every day of the week. So preparation is about every day of the week, not just Friday when you show up for a pregame to think that you can stand there or sit there and talk about everything and then go out and work a good job. It's an all week, every day system to be the best official you can be, to be prepared. That's what the players do, that's what the coaches do, and that's what you have to do as an official if you expect to be the best. Thanks to NFL referee and AAHSO President Walt Coleman for spending a few minutes with us talking about preparation. Let's review what Walt gave us. The importance of working on all elements of your game. It's an everyday thing. Be in shape. Work out. Round is not a shape, guys. you got to study the rules. Take the tests. We provide those here for you on the website and through our email services. Think about your mechanics. Watch videos, training videos like the ones here. And watch videos of your crew working through our huddle accounts. And then watch any other video you can get your hands on, even watching officials working on TV. We're not going to have near as many mistakes uh, with the real refs working than we did with the replacements, but you can still learn stuff by watching those guys. Watch how they move, watch how they spot the ball, watch how they track forward progress. So preparation, it's an everyday thing, guys. Thanks to Walt. We'll do another segment with Walt next week. All right, take a look at some uh, UNR fouls. Let's take a look at this play first. A uh, little run around the end here. Gets in the end zone, gets knocked down late. Back judge, good job focusing in on this late action here. Watch running back now. He's going to slide to the outside, run just around the tight end position there and into the end zone. Kind of gets drugged down a little bit, but doesn't lose his feet. And, uh, and then the defensive back comes in and lays a lick on him there. Ball's in the end zone there. He gets away from that, and then wham, there it gets bull rammed there in the end zone back judge with a flag up on the play good job of continuing to officiate letting the line of scrimmage guys handle the call for touchdown and then you clean up this play correctly here this is an unnecessary roughness foul correctly called by the back judge here's another play this is a good job by the umpire picking up set this play up we're gonna have a player just standing around the pile after the dead ball action and and the umpire alertly uh, police in the play here on the inside is going to pick up this call. So you got the runner of the ball carrier there up the middle. See 56 there. Just get waylaid there late by number 17. He's just standing around the pile. Umpire's right there on top of the play. Get a close up here. See 56 right here. Keep your eye on that player right there, number 56. Wham! You see that just, just a peel off. Guy standing around, clearly not in the play. 17 comes in. Just a dirty shot in the back. Just a peel off block there. And uh, the umpire gets that one. Give you another look at it here. Ah, it falls all the way on his player. That's just a nasty hit. No reason for that. This is a good alert action, keeping our heads up and focusing on the play. Good job for the umpire here on this UNR. Show you this play here from the press box. It's got a couple angles. It's got an end zone angle that's going to actually give us the best look at the only look at this foul here. Good job by the crew here picking up two fouls on this play. It's a long running play, and we're going to have a horse collar tackle right near the goal line. Whee, just pulls him down there. We get that one correct call. But now let's look behind the play 
Referee, great job of, of officiating, not getting in too big a hurry. Covering your area, players in your area here. Watch this. Wow. This guy's clearly behind the play. Referee, bam, late flag there. Number 20 is uh, clearly out of the play, just trailing the action here. And, and he gets blindsided. This is just a cheap shot. Behind the play, clearly not part of the play. Knocks him all the way to the ground. I know it's football, guys, but uh, there's no reason for this. This is a great job by the referee of keeping the play boxed in. This is what, exactly what we're talking about, keeping the play boxed in. Keep all the players in front of you. And uh, if the referee had run by this, he wouldn't have seen it. So good job of keeping the play boxed in and alert for the dead ball action. Proper call here, 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. And the crew gets two fouls here on this one, and we just replay the down. Good job, guys, on getting these UNR fouls. Very, very important that we stay alert, keep our heads up, and, and catch these fouls when they happen. Still struggling with these calls. False starts involving uh, the keys for the referee and for the line of scrimmage. Remember the line of scrimmage, guys, you're looking at the center, and then all the players on your side of the field at the line of scrimmage are these wide outs also for the line judge. These would be your keys also. For the referees, the backs and the quarterback are your keys. So anybody in the backfield behind the tackles and the quarterback, your key. Let's take a look at this one where we struggle with this. Man, quarterback directs a man over in motion. Then as right to get this front, see that head go down right there? That's a false start. We draw the defense in, and we make no call here, guys. we got to make something. Everybody in the place saw this. This is a false start. should be correctly called on the quarterback for this move right there. That's a false start. Referees, we want you to shut this play down and rule this a false start on the quarterback for the head bob. Now, if he does this action, doesn't draw anybody in, then you know you got a you got the potential there where you can go in and talk to the quarterback and say, hey, I watched the head bob. Can't do that. But catch you doing that. It's going to be a foul. You know, warn him, warn the coach, let him know. You don't I don't want you to stop the game to do this. Just do it between plays. Just let him know we're watching that head bob. If he draws the defense in or if it's too overt of an act, we definitely want a, a, a false start called on the quarterback in this play. More to talk about with the referees here. This is an illegal block in the back. We're going to have an interception thrown by the quarterback here to an underneath defensive linebacker, and he's going to run down the field. I want to watch. I want you to watch this player at about the 38-yard line here, um, and we're going to introduce a phrase called chase mode, and we're going to freeze frame this video right. We uh, I do a little isolation here so you can see about the 38 and a half yard line. Watch that player. He's just going to level the offensive player. Wham! That's a nasty hit. Black, back, get back this up. Give you a couple of looks at it here. Just, just plows him over. We'll talk about chase mode uh, uh, today, and we'll talk about it again here in a couple of weeks. But you know, we got this player now at the 41-yard line, and basically, if you would just draw a line on that player from uh, his shoulder pads, just make those lines extend down both shoulders, so everything that's behind him in a 180-degree angle. Any player that's in that zone, shoulder to shoulder, behind him, 180 degrees, is in what we call the chase mode. So when a player is in chase mode and approaching his opponent, we want to really focus on these guys. We want to zero in on him for a potential block in the back. And referee, you know, this is one of these plays where it's going to be kind of straight line. You're not going to be able to really get a good look at that offensive player. But when you see that player coming up in chase mode in a reverse field mechanic, you've got to focus in on him. And if he hits him in any part of his back from chase mode, then we want a block in the back. Now, if he's parallel side to side and comes at him and gets a little bit of the back, but most of the contact's on the side, we want to stay away from that. That's not going to be a block in the back. But from chase mode coming up behind, initial contact is in the back, any part of the back, we want that foul called for an illegal block in the back and what we want you to describe that as an illegal block in the back from chase mode. And uh, we introduce that phrase to the officials and we talk to the coaches about it. And then they understand the verbiage when we talk about a player was in chase mode. He's very, very suspect to uh, an illegal block in the back, which is what we see in this play right here. Illegal block in the back from chase mode. Let's take a look at this play. We're going to call offensive holding here. And, uh, I want you to look at this on video. Here's the first potential one right here on the edge where this defender's kind of rolled up and, and there's just not a whole lot to look at right there. And we've got one more here outside, right there at about the 42-yard line. Maybe that's the 38-yard line here. 
a little bit of an outside technique, but uh, defender just turns and keeps running. Give you another look at it here. Let you see what you say. No, no real material restriction. You know, we're talking again about material restriction. How important it is that we see, you know, a material restriction. The defenders needs to be slowing down because of, uh, you know, we're calling a potential hold there. Get a good look at this defender here on the inside there. That that outside block he just spins. There's no restriction there. Now on the outside there. Maybe turns the defender a very, very little bit, but he just keeps right on running. No material restriction on that part either. Take a couple of looks at it here. Important thing is we're looking for hands on the outside, grabbing hold of the jersey. And then remember, focus your attention on the defensive player. He's going to tell you if he's being held. If you see something overt, you know, like he's running with one shoulder lower than the other one, or he's really working to try to get away, you can see he's being held. That's material restriction. But when they just grab a little bit, and the defender rolls out and keeps right on going. And uh, we have no real material restriction. These are the kinds of fouls that we've got to stay away from, guys. These are not holds. Make them big. Remember we talked about making them look like they're going to, uh, what, what we're going to see when we see the video. you got to try to condition your mind to see on the field what we're going to see in video. And you do this by watching a lot of video of these types of plays and you don't see any real material restriction here. How is the defense affected by this little bit of technique problem that the uh, offensive player may have had? So stay away from these types of fouls guys. When we have hold, make them big. Another week's training video in the books. Appreciate you guys spending some time watching this. Remember preparation is our buzz phrase for this week. Keep working hard. The playoffs are right around the corner. If you have any questions, you can email me at toddallen65 at mac.com. Until next week, Todd Allen with the Arkansas Association of High School Officials saying thanks for watching.